Welcome to I haven't done it yet, Broadcast. I am Hate Mail. With me today we have Zubaz. Uh, good evening. Hawkeye. Hey guys. And the burger. What's up everybody? And this is the Burger Shack this month. Burger's back. And um, we are going to... Wait, what was last month? Did we do the Hawk Nest last month? Or was it a different one? Uh, I, think month, I, I don't think there was one last month. We did it ever come out? No, we did one last month. We do one every Yeah, you did it with Biff. Oh, it was oh. Biff's bar. That's right. How did I forget? <laughs> so, um, we are talking about a tune that's very near and dear to Owls and Punchline. And uh, but before we get into that, we just started playing the Batman event, which I'm still in the middle of running right now on auto. But what, what they give they assign Doom at the Doom at the beginning of every match. Yes. Okay. I, I didn't know if that was like a bug or something because I kept my characters kept getting Doom over and over. I think it's um, when they ran the last time in September when they had the Batman event uh, at, at the beginning of every match in that one you got one disease and it was just supposed to be like a joker mechanic it's like oh joker is spreading his fear toxin around gotham or whatever um i don't know i've been reading the story i don't know that they've explained why there's a doom at the beginning of every match uh but it it is something that you have to deal with i'm getting two in these later nodes yeah yeah it's each one of your characters has a small chance of getting a doom you know my RNG, so I'm going to get two or three every match. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to get that one with just all four characters yeah. saying. <laughs> it's like, I only have like one character left by the time it gets the... I mean, I'm on, running on auto right now, but I'm like looking up and I'm like, wow, I only have one guy left. It's bad. I'm just yeah, really I mean, if you, if you run... Uh, what's it called? Red, Red Robin, like uh, he clears it immediately. If you're, if you're actually afraid of the Doom, that's like a very easy way to handle it, uh, but I don't think it's too much to be afraid of. Not so far. So you're telling us, uh, we were talking about before the show started, you get one rebirth crystal out of this event? Correct. That's, so, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, we we don't know if it repeats yet. Um, I, I would be surprised if it repeats, but I guess if it does, it would allow a couple days worth of those. Yeah, if you get three of them, that wouldn't be too bad. But... What else... And then I heard one Shiva shard, which you know break the bank. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wait, later on, one of the the victory rewards is it's fifty five XP, uh, fifty five hundred legendary essence, thirty five speed force, one Shiva shard. <laughs> I did see you got well, ten blue rings on one of the notes, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you just want to look at how much uh, Jace's value compared to Shiva. The last three nodes give you 35 Jace, one Shiva, 15 Jace. So <laughs> the exchange rate looks to be somewhere about 50 Jace shards to one Shiva. That's what's happening, so. <laughs> uh, I still haven't geared him. I have a, a decent uh, collection of slow gears for a change. I have two at the moment. All right, well, let's get into the more important topic, which is the new characters, which is why everybody's here. And let's start with Punchline. Um, from what I've seen, and uh, you haven't heard it yet because Tier List is coming out after this episode. Oh, no, wait, Tier List is already out. What am I saying? Um, <laughs> so if you've listened to the Tier List, uh, you know that I've complained profusely that I didn't have a chance to farm gear, which is still not Red Gear Day. So I didn't gear Punchline yet, even though I could take her up. But from what I've seen in the videos and Burger, um, actually, we'll start with Zubaz so you can give us the lore end on her she seems like she might be a decent character so Zubaz I know she doesn't have a rich history but she's been around for a little bit yeah she's she's pretty new um she she came out with DC Rebirth which like is a couple years at this point um but you know I think one of the the big things about Punchline that the, the comparison that gets drawn is just okay fine she's new Harley Quinn uh and I think that that's a very very uh, misleading and kind of rudimentary interpretation of the situation. Um, so, so she is, you know, she fills that role of kind of being Joker's sidekick. Um, but, but it's a very, very different relationship than Harley. Um, I think Harley is kind of, 
she is attracted to Joker the man. Um, and and underlying the relationship between those two is, you know, where, where the relationship started, which was that she was Joker's doctor and she was trying to heal him and make him better. Um, and as we've seen in Suicide Squad and in the comics, the movies, that kind of thing, Harley does have a little bit of a heroic streak in her. Um, such that, you know, I think a lot of people, including Punchline herself, would say that that Harley kind of holds Joker back. Um, she, you know, she thinks she can better Joker. Punchline is the opposite. Punchline is attracted to Joker's actions. Uh, it's, you know, I think the man himself is, is less important than, say, like the chaos and anarchy that he creates. And so her... You know, her M.O. of developing her own Joker toxins and, and trying them out on uh, indigent people in, in Gotham City and and just that special brand of chaos where she's trying to push Joker further, make him more evil, make him more chaotic. I think that's a huge divergence from what we get out of Harley. So, you know, I'm happy with how the kits turned out. Uh, one, that they did give her disease, because I think that's a really fundamental aspect of her character. But two, that the developers looked at it and they had the common sense to not say, oh, OK, she's a Harley knockoff. Let's just make her kit a Harley knockoff. Uh, they went in a completely different direction with it. And I think that was a really smart move. Hmm. Oh, oh, no. I, one quick interruption. I did get all for Doom. I'm down to to Raza Ghoul who just revived and he might not survive the match. (laughs) Oh, sorry. All right, we do have some major. um, Yes, Raza Ghoul pulled it off. All right, I'm good. (laughs) Um, (laughs) He revived and the list is finished. Um, We do have. There seems to be some big, big fans of Punchline. Uh, Moomin, who recently joined our alliance, he. uh, yeah, quick quick shout out to Moomin too. If if you are on Reddit at all, uh, we did finally change the Reddit theme off of the Atlantean month uh, that wound up being three months. Um, and Moomin actually created the banner uh, that we've got like a really fun banner for this month celebrating the new tunes and the reworks that we've got. So check that out if you haven't done it yet. I haven't seen it even though I posted on it. <laughs> it, it well, I just did it this afternoon. Oh, okay. So no, yeah, I haven't yeah. Seen it yet. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I love it. He he does awesome stuff. <clears throat> and I wanted to have him on the, the podcast of talking about her, but he so far has uh, been a little shy. So <laughs> so we'll we'll try to muscle him and coming on eventually. That'd be be cool to have him. There there's a couple other people that are really into it. I know Joker's real in in the punchline. Once he's had a chance to gear her, we might do a, a special episode mid month to talk about her in a little more detail once people have had a little more time to play with her um well yep. she's going to be the highest power level tune right yeah so That's what it seems like yeah i think she probably will be and um we have some super high powered tunes like all, even the, the both the reworks are super high powered so now 2d has the highest powered team in the game which just feels wrong for some reason <laughs> <laughs> he's gone so meta yeah, he really is <laughs> between supergirl and then you know hush and they're they're such high powered. He's like just shy of forty seven thousand power team, which is just crazy. And it's yeah. I still am I still a little jaded that I've never had an RB five get a rework. In all this time. One had day. Two like, had like I've, I've never had any much tunes. What's that? I've never had an RB five get a rework either. So <laughs> well you don't RB five anybody. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Usually you do worse tunes. Like I, I feel like I'm in the driver's seat as far as getting uh, an RB5 rework. I got Parasite and Stripe ready to go. Yeah, I, th- I think I think one of those two probably could get one. Well, a lot of the tunes that I've done have been Power Crap. I really thought Catwoman would get a rework this month potentially. I mean, she's still yeah, awesome, but like Killer Frost could use one. Even Hot Girl starting to get a little Power Crap. Um, I get Flash definitely could use one. So I got a decent amount of tunes that could could stand to get one i figure eventually it's got to. did you buy did you yet buy i should say the uh the new hawk girl skin for your rb5 hawk girl oh yeah i oh, know i bought that as soon as i logged in immediately <laughs> I, I logged nice. in a little late we were planning a little mini vacation and good god things are expensive right now 
you can't go to the keys for even remotely. So that that's making my DC Legends purchases this month a little more painful than usual. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but so let's punchline. I know Hawkeye. You have her L four. Yeah, I took her up to L four. And Burger, you have her L one or L five, or did you take her? You ran in a legendary. Uh, so right now, I have her L four. I I'm gonna take her L five. I just need more legendary essence. Guess what today is? Yeah, Lord of the Underwing or whatever. Yep. Um, It'll be done today. So, Burger, what are your initial thoughts of Punchline? She looks really good on the videos I've seen. Yeah, I mean, she. I mean, I think she does well. I mean, hits pretty hard, and she. I mean, like, I mean, the disease helps a lot. Um, you know, I, I really like her kit. Um, you know, when I I haven't played with her as much as Talon, um, just because I think you know, just kind of geeking out over Talon a little bit. Um, but so far, when I have used her, like I've I've really I've really been a fan. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've probably only played with her like you know twenty times or so so far. How about what do you think, okay? I think she's going to go a long way to making a disease more viable. Um, being able to apply through her passive underneath immunities is um, very helpful. Uh, she, like Berger says, she does hit pretty hard. Um, and unfortunately, also like Berger, I've kind of uh, neglected her over town uh, just because, you know, we're in the house. That's what we do. <laughs> um, I, a lot of the videos I've watched that, Ignoring immunities on a passive out of turn attack, and then she puts that debuff immunity on that ignores, and I'm not sure if that's intended. Uh, Doom asked about it. I don't know if we did we get a response about that. I can't remember. We did not. Okay, I didn't think so. Um, so I'm guessing it's probably intended, or if it's not, they might just say it is. Uh, so that would make her even more attractive as a character to put debuff immunity on like a Terra so um, or buff immunity excuse me so that's that seems really strong I think she's going to end up being a very good character I'm kind of excited to use her later this week I doubt she'll be any good in raids because disease and bleed characters stink in raids but I think that she'll probably be used a fair amount this siege unless Superman's on every team which is very possible <laughs> so we'll see I think it could get interesting with uh, with Enchantress as well, with sending all the disease back and forth, basically, especially if there's like two Enchantresses out there. I think it could get a little messy, uh, which should be interesting. Let's... Yeah, it would be like when Grodd was a bonus tune and they just kept stealing uh, the right. intelligence up sacks back and forth. <laughs> um, let's talk Legendary Order because people are going to be doing her event soon and are going to be very curious as to what what makes the most sense? Um, what would you guys think probably would be the first one? I went. I went five first. Um, I think I went four first. Um, I mean, give me just a second. I apologize. Yeah. So the five yeah, heard, starting think, was invisibility one turn, and then it's empowered stamina up, and then the four is also apply buff immunity if the buff immunity isn't bugged i would probably lean that way without having used her um but yeah i did five first four second um two third and then her one fourth <clears throat> so um, i skipped over her two completely um you know it's for for much of the match, it's got a chance of just doing absolutely nothing for you, because you know your the tune has to be below sixty percent before it even has that fifty percent chance to kick in. So I, you know, her two I feel like is definitely her last legendary to take. And we just had an M four join us. He apparently was hungry. He's he's spying. <laughs> uh, does he pay for like early access to the Burger Shack? I don't. <laughs> I owe the place you're recording, so. <laughs> we actually need you to create a Burger Shack. Um, Get off my yard. <laughs> a Burger Shack channel, so uh, 
We don't have stragglers wandering in. Eventually. Uh, you have her punchline geared too, correct, Burger? Or M4? I do. What are, what are your <laughs> early thoughts on her? I love her. I, I'm considering RB5ing her instead of Talon. Is that just because of the high power score, or is that because you actually like her? Both. A little of both, yes. Who <laughs> <laughs> best knows me so well. <laughs> he, can't, he, can't, uh, he can't stand Tootie having the <laughs> higher power score. My heart broke a little bit when you said that, M4, by the way. <laughs> or I, mean, I could do both, you know. Maybe. I assume we'll M4 was going to do that because he talked me out of buying the Supergirl shards and then pretended like he wasn't going to buy them and now he bought them so he could pass me in reverse too. <laughs> <laughs> so. I will not confirm or deny that. <laughs> um, yeah, she seems like a really good tune. Do you agree with either her four? What would you do for Legendary Order based on what you've seen so far? I took the passive. That's the best one. Her four? Yeah. Yeah, I thought four and five are kind of the first two. Then after that, I'm really not sure. Um, I think it's like four, five, one, three, two is what I would personally put it as. Yeah, I think I think Doom is pretty weak uh, these days. So I would, I are might you, are you even take her. Diva? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did Doom. yeah, I did Doom last also. I mean, I, I just don't see it. Like, there's very rarely am I like, oh, damn, Doom just killed me. I... And here's the thing. If, if you're playing her right, I think that all of your disease should kill somebody within the four turns that it would take Doom to trigger. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, it seems like L2 is really all you need with her. Like that seems to be the idea. Yeah, I agree there. For if you get her passive legendaries, I think you're 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 pretty much set with her. Yeah, and she seems like um, I mean, I like Doom, but you're right with all the diseases, it's probably probably not needed at all. So I will put that last. I think. So have you guys checked out the new Hawk Girl skin? Yes. I oh, haven't yes. seen it in game. I've only seen it. I bought it and saw her like main screen, but I hadn't tried it yet. But it looks like it's going to look awesome. Yeah, it's so badass. It's the Earth 2 skin. Really, really cool. All right, let's no, move on to. No bias at all, Hawkeye, right? None. None. Zero. <laughs> I'm a little insulted you even asked me that. Let's move on to the main event, which is Talon, who came out pretty darn good. Um, I still struggle with bleed tunes when I use them for whatever reason, but he definitely is going to make bleed tunes significantly better. Uh, Berger, what are your initial thoughts on him? I I really like him. I mean, the only <clears throat> the only thing that I that kind of catches you in some matches if you can't um because he's a little slower um that if you can't like you know kind of get somebody going first uh to set him up like but if you can if you can get him going and he gets a move he he does he hits hard i mean like he'll so i have him rb1 already he'll take out like rb3 uh black flash with his aoe um, you know, I've had him, I mean, say RB1 Spectres takes out with his AOE. Um, so you kind of have to watch a little bit, like how you use that. Like if they haven't started like stacking awareness or anything before, um, because if you have a higher powered specter, it still kind of throws a little bit of issues. Cause if you, if he ends up killing other people with his AOE, then specter kind of goes, goes off right and starts stunning everybody. Um, but it's, I mean, his he, he's really strong. Like, I don't think he's going to be S tier by any chance, but for what he does, I mean, really, there's there's nobody that does it better. He's you know, ha brings like a new little, new little element to the game, and um, I, I think he does. He, he's really good. Wait, Burger, what new element are you talking about? The one that Blue Beetle does the same way, but like here for 
came out a year ago. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Well, you can consider it new that he but, adds bleeds after. Yeah, adding bleeds, <laughs> adding all the immunities, adding that, like hitting hard actually <laughs> when he does it. Uh, Blue Beetle doesn't quite do that yet. Okay. And my boy, I, um, Peacemaker, does technically do it and hits hard. Some 70% of the time. Yeah. If he's RB5. So the problem with uh, Talon, he hits so hard. So it, I, I hear all the time uh, Talon plus Dr. Poison equals win. I have him in a one, and then sometimes he just kills the blue flat out. But high RB, I don't even know if we need the. Um, Dr. Poison. Well, I guess for the camp list, but... Yeah, my I have problem with him is so that hard. lately I've been play- facing a lot of teams that all seem to, since I want to use Talon, all seem to have Azrael, and at L2, which is what mine is at, he just pisses them off and then gets killed, but I think at higher level it's probably a lot better. Um, I, we, we did skip. Do you, do you think people know who oh, the yes. talent is? Sorry. I got so excited about talking about him. Zubaz. <laughs> I know. I, I just, I don't, maybe you're taking for granted, but I mean, maybe the court of owls knows who yeah. talent is, but do you think that, do you think that the fans know who, the, who talent is? I think a lot do. He's, there, he's a, lot, a much better known villain than most, but, um, please. You can't get it. Can you really call yourself. Oh, sorry. Go on for. <laughs> I'm gonna say Zubat. Please enlighten us. Even I, from the court of Oz, do not know who Talon is. So <laughs> well, can, can you please enlighten sure. us? But can you so, really call yourself yeah. a fan if you don't know who Talon is? Maybe. Uh, I mean, maybe you're an older fan, but I, I would say, uh, I mean, the Talon is a title. It's 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 multiple different people throughout history, and the Talon always acts as the chief assassin basically for the court of owls and so you're probably asking well who are the court of owls uh the court of owls are a conglomerate of whales uh mostly whiners whose opinions the community values far too highly and who almost all have inferiority complexes about better alliances I like 1500 <laughs> or alliance uh, atlantis <laughs> after dark um, <laughs> <laughs> so are those the same ones that win every? <laughs> this, is, this is this is still about the comics, guys. That is don't, Mike. Don't. That is Mike. That is Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Well, I mean, uh, that's saying that's a comic book I would love to read. Is about. A group. <laughs> that's what we that need to illustrate raid. us a comic book. <laughs> <laughs> that win every raid somehow. <laughs> that overcome all odds, mega alliances, <laughs> and they still go out there. And, and really, like, they're <laughs> I'm very outnumbered here. I don't know why I went into, like, the Court of Owls labyrinth and decided to, to really wing it like that. Um, but, no, for real. I mean, he is, he is the assassin for the Court of Owls. They, they pump him up with a lot of stuff so that he can become kind of like a superhuman freak. Uh, he doesn't die. Um, like, the, the, this particular talent, William Cobb, is, I think he was born, like, early 1900s uh, and is still going into modern times, which uh, I think the, I think WB did a good job reflecting that with his um, cheat death skill um, and his constant healing. You know, I think they really, really tapped into a lot of his skills from the comics, which is really cool. I think both of the kits this month uh, did a great job of that where they haven't in, in previous months. Um, And then, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different talents. I think that, that, William Cobb is probably the most well-known one. Uh, He's a knife thrower from the circus and his animations in the game all reflect that he's throwing knives all over the place. I think the bleeds make a ton of sense for him. Um, So they did. I I think, you know, again, like that's usually why I come in here is to assess whether or not they looked at the comics at all when they were coming up with the kits. And I think in this sense, they, they did a really, really good job with that this month. Mr. Zubas, is that just a coincidence or certain new individuals had to say in that? <laughs> uh, there were some skills that Talon has that I think were uh, very much a team effort from the VIP team. And for those of you that are unaware, the VIP team does have some new members. And I think that those new members, um, number one, are extremely handsome. Uh, <laughs> and number two, have contributed really well out of the gate 
And uh, so they, you know, I think their, their new blood, uh, no pun intended, combined with the years of experience of the, the old guard, uh, put together some really good kits this month. Yes, they're also very humble. From what I heard. Wait, like M4 Extreme and I are not there though. <laughs> so, so who, where's the handsome coming from? The handsome <laughs> is. I, listen, that the, I, I specifically spoke with the mothers of the new VIP members, uh, and they say that they're the most handsome. So, that's that's that sounds uh, like a really good source. <laughs> that guy at Mardi Gras holding up the sign that we, that we recently saw. I hear he's the most handsome. So it's... <laughs> oh, well. So getting back to the actual gameplay, um, Hawkeye, what are your early thoughts? Um, Talon is great. Um, not just for bleed teams, but he really reopens it up for all kinds of different uh, debuff based teams uh, you know speed downs agility downs any of your any of your debuffs he's able to really open things up um, and the other thing is he puts down a ton of bleeds because he has his basic can apply eight bleeds pretty much every time he attacks uh, because he almost always has true sight at the beginning of his turn unless uh, he gets uh, buff immunity on him, so pretty much he puts eight down every time. Plus, he does out of turn attacks. Um, Any time that a bleeding enemy attacks, so it's just you know, I was doing I was playing with him on stream last night, and you know, there's a, there's that one point where I was facing a Barda who, I mean, she probably had forty or fifty bleeds on her. Nice, that's pretty cool. And the other thing I really do like about him, which I don't have the skill yet, but is that heal. I mean, I've seen some of Burger's videos, and he just heals endlessly. I was going to stop at L3, and then I realized I did not grab that fourth legendary, and I had to go back and buy more packs. Um, it, it's unlimited. Um, 30% you know, true heal is massive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he can get, yeah. you know... Um, and, and because he puts down so many bleeds, he does it all the time. I mean, I saw him come back from the dead four or five times in just one video, which is oh yeah, pretty awesome. Well, I mean, he gains the thirty percent true heal regardless of bleeds or not on the opposing team. It's the uh, cheat death mechanic is based off of rather the yeah, other team has bleeds on. That's what I meant. But yeah, I mean, it's like when we saw Wally's kit. We thought that it was going to be unlimited, and as long as he had the speed ups, we thought it was going to be unlimited. So I originally thought with his kit that, you know, you get one shot with it, but it's as many as many times as there's bleeds, you, you have a ninety percent chance. M four, what are your early impressions at L one? Uh, pretty much uh, Hawkeye and Burger covered it. Um. But yes, I am liking how he opens up the floor. And uh, Hawkeye, he's perfect for Hawk, Hawk Girl too, because uh, she's slower. So any of those debuffers that are slower than him, he just opens the floor for them. I haven't tried her with him yet. I'm going to have to mess around with that. Because I do miss my Hawk Girl. And you're right, because there's so many tarot teams, I haven't been using her as much, so... Hmm. Okay, I was uh, I was still recovering uh, last night from from the Mardi Gras festivities. Did you happen to run Talon with uh, King Shark at all? I I have not. Uh, I would assume Hawkeye. Yes, has. I did. Okay. How how'd that go? Uh, it actually goes really well, especially against the Terra teams, uh, because once Talon can clear off the uh, buff immunity or debuff immunity, King Shark can then go put a stun on Terra the second time around, so she can't just automatically re-trigger the uh, buff oh, immunity. Nice. That makes sense. Is um, Talon faster than King Shark? I can't remember. No, King Shark's a speed. Oh, well, that stinks. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, that, that, that's probably Talon's biggest weakness is uh, he is not not among the fastest teams in the game. Yeah. Very middle of the pack. 
I think it can help him though in certain regards because like, you know, I think in a lot of instances, if he was too fast, like you were just saying, I think he would purge all the immunities from a Terra team and then she would just go again and reapply them all. Uh, and then, his, you know, that move is on a cooldown. So, so I think that there's the potential that you can, you know, kind of time it right so that maybe he does that move after the second time she's already applied the debuff immunity and then you're good to go. Yeah, it's definitely a double-edged sword. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes you're like, oh man, I'm glad he's slower. And then other times you're like, I wish he was just a little bit faster so I could, uh, you know, I wish he was faster than King Shark, for example, so I could clear the immunities and then just, okay, King Shark, let's get the sun and we got all these blades in, so you're going to get a bunch of strength ups and power strength ups at that. Yeah, and, I did. I, yeah. I advocated for him to be a lot faster because lore-wise it didn't make sense to me that he was so slow, uh, but unfortunately that was just something that didn't take. I mean, Tillowog's 125 speed. Lore has nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is that if there's no Terra on the other side, he's even better. So bear him like with, let's say, Cassandra King, the fast, I believe she's the fastest bleeder in the game. Every time they hit your team, they would just be swimming in bleeds. Isn't Aqualad a little faster? Yeah, but just, just one. Oh, okay. You want, you want AOE bleeds? Correct. So each when they attack your team, all of them would just get retaliated on by by talent. And the, the good thing about the two new tunes is you don't have to hit them. Well you don't have they don't have to get hit. Anyone on your team, they would just react to it. I'm kinda of surprised 2D Trans not taking him and Punchline RB five this month because they just Talon's like the missing piece to almost every one of his teams. He probably will. He's also eventually, eventually gonna go broke. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I mean just yeah, if you're into the debuff, bleed, any type of teams, Talon's just like such like he's the missing link to so many of those teams. Yep. Oh yeah, definitely made bleed cool again. So <clears throat> legendary order I'm a little tight uh, D- tough on deciding. I would assume three, two, one is the way to go, but his four is so good that I'm. What would any of you guys put that above? Any of the three, two, one. I wouldn't, because he's not the toughest dude. So you're probably gonna hide him, anyways. I mean, it's a good insurance policy, but I wouldn't put too much stuff on it early on if you can't get him to high levels. Or I did. Yeah, I put his four actually second, just because. He can't take a hit that well. And so since he's not going that fast, if anybody's able to get a hold of him, then you know, he kind then at that point you lose any benefits of his three at all. How about you? Um, if you okay. Uh if you're gonna take him like all the way to, you know, L three, L four, um, level seventy, eighty, whatever. Um, honestly, I, his two is not as impressive as it looks on paper. I mean, it does a ton of damage, but, um, you know, his AOE do, does good damage. His basic always hits twice. Um, I would almost bump the two down to the fourth spot, to be honest. Oh, really? Okay. Because a lot of times I'm finding, A, the battle's pretty much over by the time I even use it, because you're almost always going to open up with his three. And you have to get bleeds down to get the bleeds down in order for it to trigger and hit for that up to fifty percent true damage. I, I guess yeah, your his basic is so good that you almost never need his two, but I think the value of it is let's say you're fighting a green. The true damage is what you can he can do he can use to kill, you know, affinity disadvantage. Yeah, and but it, you're right. You're, it's situational. I, I was also gonna say, you know, if you're if you're a you know, a gear ten and a half, or you're, you play at a lower gear level. You know, that's going to be more effective for, you, for for those type of players, I think. Yeah, I think you really want L four with him. Like that seems to be the ideal. Um, I mean, L. I mean, his five is really good too, but the other ones take precedent. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of odd. You know, punchline. None of her legendaries are really. Uh, Unbelievable, but I believe Talon, like all five of them, are yeah, fantastic. 
It's so weird that we wound up with this like really overpowered representative of the Court of Owls, uh, you know, given who gets to have input on the kits and stuff. That's just it's very random to me, it seems. <laughs> What's more disappointing about Talon than anything else is that Bolsey, who's usually Iron Fist Deer Leader, is not required. He wouldn't no mandate it. But he wouldn't mandate it. He wouldn't mandate no it. Way. He didn't even, I wouldn't even say, I, I, I didn't expect a mandate on it, but I'm shocked and a little disappointed that it wasn't heavily pressure campaign about it. <laughs> It does not sound like the owls at all to heavily pressure anybody into doing anything. Uh, that's that sounds very unlike the owls that I know. That's what I mean, and it's talent. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I don't even like lead characters, and I'm kind of hedging on RB five in them. But I feel an obligation to, and I feel like there should be a lot of pressure from leadership about. Oh, the pressure is coming mostly from a certain individual. Like, who's going to shame you if you don't go full RB five? Not going to name names, but. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's hate mail, but I mean, we're not going to name names, but, um, but honestly, like the owls of, I mean, since you retired and went to the old person's home, fifteen hundred Zubaz, like really, it's gotten pretty low key and relaxed. You you do realize that in the past year, more fifteen hundred members have gone to the owls than vice versa, right? It's yeah, it's well, almost as if the owls are the retirement home for when like the players are done having fun and they're like, <laughs> okay, let me. You know, let me just finish on a high, like on a, on a nice little note here. Uh, now that I'm I'm done having fun, let me go to the owls and, and do what I need to do, and then and then they retire completely. Because <laughs> they, they stop my own major versus my own system. Because they stop pile a million. I don't even know. They stop all the uh, raid energy before they come over. Yeah. You got you got empowered. You got vagrant. It's because the fifteen hundred is kind enough to allow M four into our chat. And what M four does is that he is the most owly owl that ever owled. He's a poacher, uh, and so he be, he poaches. He literally like looks at our raid scores and is like, oh yeah, we could use that, and you know, and then they they go elsewhere. Uh, so so yeah. Uh, it's it's fine, but we we that does we not hold no sound grudges. Like for it all. <laughs> we hold no grudges. Okay. I love there, there's there's thirty owls. I love probably at least six of them. <laughs> we'll rename nameless. <laughs> so maybe vacation home is more like it then. <laughs> yeah, that's that sounds right. Well, that was why we allowed Joshua originally into the chat so that he could, you know have some owls on loan that needed a little break <laughs> then we would well, and we were trying to troll somebody saying he joined us who was it it was Boy. it was Boy. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. is Boy still in 1500 he is oh, okay. <laughs> he's been a little quieter than you he know. he well he's been a little quiet because he mostly yeah. plays non-dcl games he he's he's a big uh big fish in the small pond known as nfl clash I know I was part of that. I actually yeah. recently left the chat. I just I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a lot to match. Although I do, I, I appreciate that he still uh, gets to work with Stanner, the former yeah. community yeah. manager for DCL. That's fun. Yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good for him to find a game that he's actually kind of decent at, right? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did watch one of his streams on there, and it was well put together. <laughs> it really was. Yeah, that game is. I thought actually kind of. I kind of. I originally got into it because I mean I do like football and um, it's you know it's a hero collector football game, but it's just the gameplay is not fun at all. And then I agree. And then I, and I really tried to like it because I thought it would be real popular and be a good thing to do content on. And then um, it, it the game never really took off. Like it was very small population, which surprised me. I thought it would be. A really big game, but I just couldn't do it. No knock on the game, I guess. But I guess it, well, kind of a knock on the game. But. <laughs> <laughs> the gameplay is bad. No knock on the game, it's but just the boring. gameplay is bad. It's, boring to me. it's, <laughs> not, good, it's not good for me, but maybe somebody else out there will find it okay. <laughs> I mean, there's people that like you know those weird puzzle games that I think are boring. So. Oh man. <laughs> 
And my problem too is that I, I played actually a game that's very like almost identical to DCL with play style and like I was really impressed, good graphics. That's like, oh, it's a great game, but it's one of those like as soon as you get into it, you know it's going to cost like fifteen thousand dollars a oh, month to play. Is it also buggy? Is it exactly like DCL? I saw it on <laughs> Tapjoy, so I was like, oh, this looks pretty interesting. I'm gonna you know, just mess around with it. And I downloaded it and played for a little bit. I'm like, oh, this is actually fun. It's a good game. Well put together. But then, then it's a gotcha game where random chance to get a ah, star here. Stay away. Stay I'm far like, away. Nope, I, I can't even pretend like I'm going to play this instant delete. So, because, yeah. I mean, DCL is already possibly scaring us with 10 crystal sales this month. So, makes me very nervous. But... Um, do we finish Talon? Yeah. So looks pretty good. I think this is a good. Month a good, good month here. Yeah, we were. I mean, Hush is kind of. Eh. He's boring. Yeah, I'm not that excited about Hush. Uh, Tally is pretty good. <laughs> I like her. She's she's pretty fun. Not a bad month. I think Siege is going to be interesting. Very interesting this month. So, and then uh, we got we got raids now. So. Guess we better get grinding. Are you sure Siege isn't just going to be three bonus characters plus an RB5 Spectre? I've heard from certain sources that's what happens. Um, you know, Spectre, I mean, Spectre doesn't always make the teams. A lot of times it's just, what's her name? Lois and... I see what you're doing there, Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you're not baiting me in, though. <laughs> Um, but no, yeah, I think, I mean, this month it'll be fun. Like, yeah, all these new little mechanics and everything that the, the tunes are doing, you know, like in, in Siege, I think it's going to it's gonna really add some new complexity to it. Like, you, you have to kind of go in preparing for, you know, silence and, you know, disease and, and, and bleeds. And then really, like, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to roll with Terra because you have people that can handle her right away. Yeah, but there isn't that many people that have Talon, so... Yeah. Oh, maybe... So everybody should wait. You should wait to try to do anything <laughs> exactly. with Talon. <laughs> the handful of us that have Talon, we're going to have so, a big advantage early on. Yeah, let's rewind this, so... <laughs> Talon, probably a C-Tune. Uh, we're, um, we're 42 minutes in. There's only, like, three people still listening, so... <laughs> 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 Let's be real. Hate mail is deleting everything after I started talking about the lore of talent. So. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky I'm lazy and don't day. go back and edit anything. <laughs> the only thing I edited was loot on the tier list yesterday. I had I had to, but and then and it, took it was only time. like thirty or forty words. Yeah, but and it was all together, which was good. But it, it, it did take me, because even though I write down the time, it never seems to be close to accurate. It's like the people complain every time about my timestamps. So it's usually a couple yeah. of minutes off. So, <laughs> so I, Should we uh, should we reshoot uh, or re-record uh, Zubaz's part where he's talking about the owls? And I'll, I'll just... <laughs> They would be like, man, that per- Zubaz sounds a lot like Burger. And I'm like, yeah, I really love, I really love the owls. I mean. <laughs> just just, just t- make sure you tell the audience how drunk you've been for the last four days. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'll just yell Mardi Gras and Aquaman every so often. Four and days? Every- oh, my God. It's like seven. <laughs> you guys don't know Mardi Gras at all. Yeah. <laughs> In your face. Yeah, I was actually surprised. Like a lot of my employees in New Orleans, they didn't really all call in sick this week. Now we had some of the stores closed, but right, it didn't, it didn't seem to. It seemed like it was a lot louder there. There were some of them complaining in our chats about having headaches and everything, but nobody <laughs> really woke up. <laughs> Yeah, this morning I, I couldn't really turn on my dishwasher because I was like, I can't hear another sound. And uh, I mentioned that in uh, 1500 chat and, and one of the other members, Pullman, posted uh, a, a gif of a marching band. And I literally looked at it and like got a headache from that. So, yeah, uh, yeah we're taking it easy for the rest of the week. Good times. All right, guys. Well, I guess we will wrap it up there because I'm old and it's starting to get creep up on my my bedtime, and I gotta run some raids and 
you know, that fun stuff. So I do appreciate everyone coming on. Glad to have Burger back on the Burger Shack. Been a little bit having to get the love stuff. you guys. And uh, everybody's back. Got the whole gang back together. Yeah. So until next time, everyone. Thanks for listening. Why does loot like trash tunes and promiscuous women so much? I guess it's true. You are what you eat. You know what isn't trash? Becoming a patron. Become a patron today and get special perks like patron only episodes, early reviews, and content based on your requests. Just go to patreon.com forward slash W R O L broadcast.